when they're raw, they have a chemical in them that... But they're right. right. Yeah, they're totally right. We can eat them, but only... Well, basically, we just have to juice them and get the, get the poison to cook out, you know. Hi, Lizzie and I are stripping black, no, <laughs> elderberries from their stems that we've just um, picked in the garden. We've had these elderberries growing in our garden for five years or so, and this is the first year they've produced anything. We, we finally got our grass under control. That's really why they did well this year. And uh, you know, who knows what else, what other um, factors contributed to that. But, but for whatever reason, I think that's the reason, the main reason. But anyway, we got, we got quite a bit. And it, this is only, well, this is everything that looks like it's um, ready right now, ready to harvest. And it takes, it takes a lot to, um, to make, you know, to make any measurable amount. Oops, I just spilled them. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're really spread out. But the reason, um, the reason elderberries are good, they're medicinal. They also make, um, apparently, we've never made it before, but um, I've seen recipes for jams and jellies and um, syrup. syrup, like pancake syrup. And of course, there's the medicinal elderberry syrup too that, uh, that we've had before. We've um, received it as gifts or, or purchased some versions. Homemade ones are always better. Um, so we're gonna, I, I imagine since since they're all, you know, they're all cooked, um, you know, elderberry pies, uh, other things, just juice. Um, since all those are cooked, um, I imagine the uh, the nutrients are are the same regardless of how it's prepared. They're basically just elderberries and sugar and maybe pectin, a few other things. But um, our our real goal was to just have them uh, be medicinal. And uh, it seems that in whatever form we, we eat them, they'll, they'll probably be medicinal anyway. So I, I, I guess we'll just cook them down and make whatever we want out of them. <laughs> add sugar and boil it down farther, further if we want syrup and add different flavorings to it if we want, if we want to change the flavor at all. Anyway, it's, it's just kind of exciting to, to get them from our, own, from our own garden. I guess it's not really a garden, it's more like a, a a grove of sunflowers and and these are growing in there so that's another thing as um birds love these things we, we've never these had green ones? Sorry. Uh, yeah keep the green ones okay. green ones off um and the stems too if possible okay those kind of green ones so from the research that we've done again this is our first time harvesting our own but there's there seems to be some <laughs> differences of opinion uh, on the internet um, and I'm not apt to just blindly believe something that I read on the internet but after after going through about 10 different websites um, some that appeared to be more opinion pages than anything <laughs> and then some that seemed a little bit more authoritative uh, it seems that there are varieties that are somewhat poisonous when they're either unripe or or raw. So at first we weren't eating these at all um, raw because um, some websites said that you can't. That there's there are uh, substances in the in the raw berries that are poisonous. And uh, then on other websites, it it says that. It's, it's only certain varieties that you might find in the wild that, that are that way. These ones, since we bought them as, as actual, you know, fruit, you know, edible fruit trees, uh, fruit bushes, uh, we, I don't remember the variety, but I'm going to assume that they were a cultivar that was, that was meant to be uh, cultivated. You know, uh, we're going to assume they're not going to kill us when we eat them. <laughs> well, so because we're just assuming and we don't know for sure, I actually did eat a few of them raw. They, they're more or less 
I mean, they're pretty bland, to be honest. Uh, elderberries have never been my, my favorite fruit <laughs> in any state. Um, they're, they're kind of flavorless, flavorless a little bit, but, but they do have a distinct flavor and they have a really good smell. They smell really nice, especially when they're all together. But, but again, it's, it's really faint. It's not, it's not a real strong smell, but, um, it, uh, the, the general consensus on all the websites that I saw was that regardless of whether it's a, a cultivated variety or wild, or if you're picking them too raw or whatever, is as soon as you cook them, um, all possibility of being, being harmed by these substances is, is, is gone. Um, apparently the heat in any case, um, gets rid of that, that poison, poison cooks out, <laughs> which is generally not a, not something you can really rely on. Um, cause there are lots of poisons that uh, don't cook out, but, uh, but in this case, uh, it seems to be, uh, that, <clears throat> well, that, that that happens every time. Um, again, the chances of these being a variety that's, uh, that's meant to, to be eaten, um, without cooking is probably pretty high. But just to be safe, we're not going to eat very many of these <laughs> until we cook them into jelly or syrup. And uh, once that's done, we can dribble it on ice cream or pancakes. And yeah, I know I'm kind of excited about that. Once the sugar or honey um, is added to it, or maple syrup, oh, we'll try that. I don't know. We'll try. We'll try some different things. This, this stuff is actually kind of expensive in stores, even in health food stores. And in fact. Was it last fall or the, the time before that? Um, well, we, we actually stocked up as soon as we, you know, kind of uh, found out how, how medicinal they are. Uh, some studies have shown that um, they decrease the amount of time that you have the flu or, or cold. They the, the cr decrease the time that you have it from about, a, um, well, sa said seven to ten days down to two to four days, which is a really huge, um, huge benefit. And, uh, so typically, uh, we've, we've been using the syrup as medicinal, um, in the, in the late fall going into winter and, and, and through the spring. And we kind of got used to taking it for a while, just as a, almost like a tonic. We would take a, a tablespoon or two each every single day. And, uh, you know, if we have more than that, and three or four times a day is even better. So part of this, <laughs> part of what I'm telling you is based on experience, because we, we have, like I said, had uh, plenty of experience um, with consuming elderberry syrup, but uh, a lot of what we're dealing with today, doing it ourselves, is, is based on, on research. So I did about 20 minutes of research for you, so you don't have to, and then it took me eight or 10 minutes to tell you about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it looks like we're much more reliable. <laughs> so we've got a little pile left. It looks like we'll have to get another, the another bowl. Look super pretty. Aren't they pretty? These things are so beautiful. Um, when they're flowering, we actually have some that are still flowering at the moment, um, on a, on another plant that doesn't have any that are ripe, but on some of the plants that that these came off of. Um, so these, these were down at the bottom actually, which surprised me because usually, maybe not usually, but it seems like the ripest fruit is at the top, but, but these ones were almost touching the ground. And, uh, and as, a, as it went up the bush, they got less ripe. So we've got some on there that are completely green on the top. And, uh, uh, I think also they were protected by the sunflowers around them. And I was going to mention that before as maybe one of the contributing factors um, to our getting a good harvest this year. We've had flowers in the past, but uh, the birds got whatever whatever came became ripe. We never actually saw anything turn even red. They were just green, and then they were gone. <laughs> so the birds got to them first in the past. But maybe planting all these sunflowers around them, and I'll show you in just a minute what I'm talking about in case you um, haven't seen this earlier in our other videos. Um, I'll show you this this huge, uh, densely forested <laughs> area of sunflowers that these are growing. Like it does. It's really fun, but we have a few trees in there besides these that 
that uh, the sunflowers seem to have, have helped, they've like nursed them. Um, there, there are instances where people will interplant uh, like a late uh, like grain crop with what they'll call a nurse crop and, and the, the one that, that grows quickly will actually shade and help protect the, the one that they really want that takes a, a longer time to grow or to ripen. And that seems to have been the case with our sunflowers. They're kind of a, a mixture of, of you know, wild sunflowers and black oil sunflowers and the gray stripe and the red teddy bear sunflowers, just a whole bunch of different varieties kind of all mixed together, interpollinated. Um, so I can't really tell you what they are, <laughs> but these um, multi-stemmed sunflowers grow up really fast and really tall, and they seem to be protecting our a crop of, of elderberries. So, kind of cool. The elderberries actually grow pretty fast too, so they don't get overwhelmed by the sunflowers. We have a couple other trees out there, um, a poplar and some apple trees that actually um, I've had to today go through and, and trim back the, the sunflowers um, to, to allow them to, those other trees to, to breathe and to, you know, to get light because the those are a lot slower growing and they don't seem to be able to keep up um, with the sunflowers as much. They, they looked like they were starting to suffer, but again, the elderberries did great with it. All right, I'm gonna help Lizzie finish these up and then I'll show you outside where these came from. I felt a squirt on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Lizzie's just picking them off, just pulling them off. It's not too hard, right? Yeah, you just kind of like rub them and they come. But both of us are, are pretty stained, so they, they pop pretty easily. They're really, really juicy. We read online where um, people said it, that this part is difficult, so it's better to put the whole, whole um, uh, thing in the freezer and then take them off, but I, I don't see how that would make anything any easier. In fact, I would, I think it might make it more difficult because then everything will be frozen. And, and these are actually um, nice and soft and pretty tough. And so it's, you don't get very many of those stems, but I think if they were frozen, they'd probably be more brittle and break off more easily. Don't you think? I don't know. Yeah, well, Who knows? Either way, it's just a lot more time added that you don't need to. Yeah, you don't really have to wait two or three hours to freeze them when you can just do it this way. Another thing I was reading is that, um, here I am not helping still, <laughs> <laughs> but I was reading that um, people have gotten upwards of 12,000 pounds of elderberries in an acre, but I can't imagine doing this to, <laughs> to 12,000 pounds of, <laughs> of elderberries. Oh, wow. yeah. They probably just shake them or something. I don't know. Maybe. Also, the ones we've always had in the past were either already syrup or they were um, dried. And I, I forgot to mention, but um, they were uh, really hard to come by um, uh, when, well, right when <laughs> they're going all over the place. Maybe virus we scares were were starting to come about, <laughs> but now we've got more here than our entire stock of dried stuff in the pantry. I should have just set it up there in the first place. So there are a few white ones in here, or white-ish, oh, pale. Yeah, we can see that. Not nearly as dark as the other one, other ones. And just to be safe, we'll take out those lighter ones. Plus, they won't taste as good.
pretty good harvest. <laughs> Wait, I want to see your hands. Oops. <laughs> Yours are very purple. <laughs> So here are the elderberry plants. You can see at the tops of the bushes, they're still quite green. But it seems like they'll only take a couple weeks to ripen up. This one here is still green and yet it's half eaten. Not sure why this one would be half eaten and that one wouldn't be. Although just a minute ago, um, I did take out some sunflowers that were kind of overhanging uh, both of these. Uh, bushes here. Got hummingbirds around me now. Here's another one. You can see that the the unripe ones are at the top. And more unripe ones, although these ones are starting to get ripe. And then down at the bottom, look at this. I, I hadn't seen these ones before. Very dark. Totally ready. Isn't it interesting that a few of them are green still? I think that's because probably the bees or other pollinating insects didn't get to those particular flowers. But the majority of them did get pollinated and therefore are fruiting and are completely ripe. But look at this one. Interesting. Now oh, these hummingbirds are coming so close to me. Dive bombing each other, but almost dive bombing me too. I love this part of our yard. It's like a forest. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Just cut it right there. It's a little hard to do one handed, but let me just take off the whole fruit cluster. And that way I can gather up quite a few of them in one hand and hang on to them. But I'm going to do it two-handed. It's a lot easier. <laughs> wow, look at all these. <laughs> Took me just a few seconds to harvest all those. And then as I was going along the bottom of the tree, I found this whole other section here that I hadn't seen before. They just seem to be hidden all over the place. Look at all those. Wow, that I feel like just right there is almost as much as we've already harvested and, um, and you know, picked them off. Um, <laughs> Looks like we'll be at this a little bit longer than I thought. <laughs> Look how that hangs in a big cluster. When they're flowering, um, they look a lot like like Queen Anne's lace or or a carrot flower the way that they They cluster and they're kind of flat on top But uh, when they get heavy like this when they're getting ripe um, They all just kind of hang upside down like this But wow, that's a lot of a lot of fruit from just one little cluster All right. Well a few of those look like they could ripen up a little bit more I mean there are some some on there that look like they're over like as ripe as they can get, and then others that could go a little bit longer. So I think I'll leave those couple clusters on there for another few days. Check them in a few days. All right, I'll try to get all of these in one handful. All right, wow. <laughs> wow, that's, that's awesome, that's a lot. <laughs> Oops, all right, got them all now. All right, back to the house. Well, here's one of those flower clusters. Let me get closer. There you go, you can see what I mean. They're really fragrant at this stage, really. Um, people make um, concoctions, flavorings and wines and things out of, out of the flowers as well. Um, so at, at all stages, they 
they seem to be useful. Isn't that pretty? Really does smell good. Wow, that's really pleasant. Well, there's some more that I didn't see. Wow. Lots and lots of them. <laughs> okay, I'll trudge back, back through this growth. Oh, by the way, look at this. Our peach tree is coming back and uh, looking good. Yay, I'm so glad. I was really sad to have lost that one. Thought we lost it anyway. Right. We thought we were done. Wow. Got a few green ones in there. But... So we just just got all those, just separated all those new ones. And I hadn't noticed till just now that the new ones that I picked are purple stemmed and the other ones were, were all green stemmed. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know why. I got them. one that's purple stemmed. Mm hmm. That's kind of weird that some of them are purple and some of them are green. Yeah. Like this, it kind of has a little bit of purple. Yeah. Wow, good job, Annie. You got a lot. Wow. We like had one little berry and then this much. Yeah, just add it up, huh? Wow, oh, it's so cool to feel a bunch of them. When they like rain on top of you, it feels so cool. Yeah. It feels like we barely even got them. We did. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> it's still fun not to touch. even done loading. Is it them? Yeah. Wow. It's not done loading. It's a lot. Okay, we'll see the. Whoops. We'll see the final count. Well, not really count. I'm not going to count them. <laughs> I didn't count every single one. What are you talking about? <laughs> one. One elderberry. Ah, ah. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> it's nice to have the harvest in. Um, so I guess we'll just cook these down, and add some sugar to them, and we'll be done. And then we can um, cook them down further after that, you know, once we decide what we want to make out of them, add pectin to them or whatever else we want. But for now, we'll just kind of preserve them as a cooked down syrup and maybe stick it in the freezer. And it should only take just a little while. And then we'll have this harvest completely um, safe and put up and, and we won't have to worry about harvesting again for probably a couple weeks. We'll see if those ones, if the weather cooperates and makes those ones ripe. And now that I've taken down some of the sunflowers, we'll see if the, if that actually really was, um, you know, protecting them from the, from the birds as much as I think they might, might have been. So, um, we'll learn from this experience. I can use this, Mom. Mama, I can use it.
really good. Mm. You like it? Mmm, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got almost exactly one quart out of all that. We started with about a quart and a half of berries. And um, actually, I we got a little bit more than a quart, but I just uh, took out a little bit of the, um, the solid parts and left the rest in. So more like a jam than a jelly. Um, with the sweetness of syrup, though, and I'll show you, I'll tell you what we did. So the recipe was one and a half quarts of elderberries, one third cup water, just to help it simmer at the bottom instead of burn, two thirds cup sugar, one teaspoon of citric acid, just for tartness, or was it citric mm -hmm. acid? Yes, that's right. One tablespoon of powdered ginger, and about a half teaspoon of nutmeg. Also, one teaspoon of cinnamon. And I think altogether it boiled about 15 minutes, roughly. Um, it was actually sweeter than I thought it would be. Um, in fact, I, as I was cleaning out the pan, I just dri dripped a little bit of water in there, maybe, you know, just eighth of a cup or something, and, um, you know, kind of swished it around until it was just, um, just a lighter version of what was in there, of the syrup. And it actually made a really, really delicious, refreshing juice. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll use this as a juice concentrate or a syrup, or we'll strain it, turn it into whatever, or, or just leave it in. Uh, I, I can see it going either way. It, it's fine, um, non-strained. I'm, I'm really surprised. This is far better than the, the store-bought concoctions we've we've had in the past and I don't know if it's because it was fresh or because it was the variety in their garden or I don't know what it is but it just worked out and we're really pleased with it but this has been fun thanks for joining us and we'll see you real soon bye